Right, so let's start to have a look at vector equations. And this is the first video in a, a series of a few that uh, will deal with this topic. So let's have a look. So let's consider a particle moving around the unit circle. Now, its Cartesian equation is given by the set of points x, y, ordered pairs x, y, such that x squared plus y squared is 1. Okay, which now, if we parameterize it, so in parametric form, it becomes uh, the form is given by the set of ordered pairs x, y, such that x is equal to cos t and y is equal to sine t for t equal to or greater than 0. <clears throat> because we've parameterized it in terms of the single variable t, we can now express it as a, as, uh, in, in, as a vector form that we can use. So in vector form, the particle has position vector at time t, r of t, r is a function of time as it moves around the circle. It's equal to cos t unit vector i plus sine t unit vector j. Okay. Now the thing about these uh, basis vectors, Cartesian basis vectors, is that as we'll see, this vector is a vector of unit length, one unit long, and it points in the x direction. j is a vector similarly of one unit length, and it points in the y direction. And these two vectors are at right angles to each other. And so on the two-dimensional plane, they provide for us a basis. We can write any vector in that two-dimensional plane as a, as a sum of these two vectors here, as, all right? as the sum of the vectors i and j. It may be multiple times of i and multiple times of j, but we can add and subtract these and multiples of them to create any vector in the two-dimensional plane. All right? And that's why i and j form our basis. <clears throat> they point at right angles to each other, they are perpendicular to each other everywhere. Okay, so our position vector, and we'll see a plot of that shortly, is cos t in the i direction plus sine t in the j direction. Now that's the x coordinate as a function of time in the i direction plus the y coordinate as a uh, function of time in the j direction. So in 3D we would have r of t as x as a function of t in the i direction plus y as a function of t in the j direction, plus z as a function of t in the k direction. All right, i, j, i, j, k in three dimensions. And again, all three of those vectors are at right angles to each other, and they form a basis for that space, meaning that any vector in that space can be written as a, some linear combination of the i, j, and k's, albeit with multiples, addition, subtraction, and so on. And we'll see more of that as we go along. We've already seen vectors at the beginning, uh, some videos, quite a few videos ago, but uh, we're just coming back to them now because the focus to look at vector equations. Now, a particle moves such as position vector r at time t, our first example here, sorry, at time t, seconds is given by, time is measured here in seconds, r of t is 2ti plus 4t minus t squared j in the j direction, t is equal to greater than zero because we're talking about time here. All right. Find its initial position. Well, initial position is at t equals zero. When we substitute zero in there, we get zero for the first component. And substitute t in here, we get zero for the second component. So what we have is the zero vector. The particle is at the origin. Now, let's find its position when t equals five. Okay, well, at t equals five, we put uh, substitute five in, t equals five. R of five is up here, two times five, two times five. Uh, up here, 4 times 5 minus 5 squared, 4 times minus 5 squared. Okay, this gives us 10i in the i direction, 10 units in the i direction, and minus 5 units in the j direction, so we're in the negative j direction. Okay, its distance from the origin is given by the absolute value, the modulus of the vector at this uh, point in time. So the absolute value or modulus of the position vector at t equals 5 is the square root of 10 squared plus negative 5 squared. Um, uh, that is approximately 11.18 units. Okay, when does the particle pass through the point 2i plus 3j? Well, all we do is we take our position vector 2ti plus 4t minus t squared j and we set it equal to 2i plus 3j. And then to solve this, we match up like components. So 2t and 2 go together. They're both the coefficients of the i component. 
okay, the i vector, the vector in the i direction, the unit vector in the i direction, so 2t equals 2, so that tells us t equals 1, and over here in the j direction, we match up the components, 4t minus t squared is equal to 3, write that down here, and solving that gives us t equals 1 or t equals 3. Now, particle can't split and be at two different places at the uh, bit a single point in two different points in time so we choose t equals one because both components agree on that so the particle passes through that point 2i plus 3j at t equals one second all right okay after one second now find the cartesian path so we can convert this into a cartesian path and what that means is that the position vector r is given by the x component in the i direction plus the y component in the j direction that gives us 2ti plus 4t minus t squared j okay so again same thing we set x equal to 2t that tells us that t is x on 2 we set the y component equal to 4t minus t squared but we now know from here that t is x on 2 so where the t is we can substitute x on 2 and here x on 2 all squared Tidying that up, we have uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2x minus x squared on 4. That's the Cartesian equation, and we could plot that. Let's just go one step further. Let's sketch the path of the particle. Okay, yeah. Reminding ourselves that, let's go up a little bit more. Reminding ourselves the position vector is 2ti plus uh, 4t minus t squared where x is 2 times t, y is 4t minus t squared. Well, at t equals 0, all of this is 0, so the particles at the origin. At t equals 1, we have x is equal to 2. x is a 2. And y is equal to 4 minus 1 is 3. So we have 2, 3. Position vectors there, so that's where the particle is. At t equals 2 seconds, we have 2 times 2 is 4, so we have 4 here, and 4 times 2 is 8, minus 4 is 4, so we have 4, 4 for our particle. And so on with other times, we put t equals 3 in here, we'll end up with a position vector here. Uh, we put t equals 4 seconds in, we'll end up with a position vector here, and t equals 5 seconds brings us down here. Okay. Um, and working those through in details, 0, 0, x, y, and so on, 2, 3, 4, 4, 6, 3, as we've just seen, 8, 0, 10, minus 5. This last one, 10 minus 5, x is 10, y is minus 5. All right, that's it then.